What up, peeps and peepettes? Morbtron back today with more Destiny 2. And today is February 27th of 2018, and New Monarchy has once again claimed victory in the faction rally. That is three in a row. Why is that? Maybe it's because the armor looks good. Maybe it's because the shaders look good. Maybe people enjoy the weapons. They're, they're off meta -ness. I don't know. But we'll get to that later on. Um, I'll go buy one here shortly. Expect a full review on that weapon tomorrow, but today we'll just kind of do a quick look at it, see what it's like. Um, so this week, Tess has Odd Dance. If you don't have that one yet, I don't. I'm not interested in it. Otter Dance. We have a Sparrow. We have the Bacino Ship. If that tickles your fancy. We've got the Jade Countenance and the Red Dwarf for the Fighting Lion and Sunshot, respectively. Uh, we have a Exotic Ghost Shell, the Cosmo Shell. Increase all XP gains by 10% and generate gunsmith telemetry on any elemental weapon kills. It's a very good ghost, actually. Uh, not having to switch out your ghost to get increased XP gains is pretty neato burrito. And then we've got the Omega Mechanos Gauntlets. So if you need gauntlets to complete your set of the vexified old school looking armor, there you have it. Uh, we'll go check out a couple of the vendors in the tower here. We'll go to Zavala first. What do you got for us today, Zavala? You've got the Eternal Blazon again. It's one that I think he sold last week as well. Neat. Um, I've done a review on that weapon, so if you're interested in that weapon, just search for it on my channel, and you will find the review for it there. It's it's a pretty good scout rifle. And then Shax, my buddy, my pal, has got a sniper rifle. The Gentleman Vagabond. High damage, high recoil. It's the highest impact sniper rifle. Pretty cool. Three rounds in the mag. Has Dragonfly, which is a trait that is kind of not so powerful. But when you're sniping stuff, stuff's going to die anyway. Not really that big of a deal. We'll go check out the... Raid Vendor, good old Benedict, and then we'll check out New Monarchy and get that new weapon and go play with it. Also, if you're looking for the Cade 6 Loot Chests, that is going to be the Flashpoint of Titan. So, that video should be up before this one, so if you're interested, it should be the video previous to this one. Go check that out. I'll show you where all of the locations for all of the chests are on Titan. And Benedict is giving us the Sins of the Past rocket launcher. So if we don't have one of those, there you have it. We've got the Prestige Raid class item. And then we've got the headpiece. Oh, well, basically the full armor set minus the class item. From the regular Leviathan Raid, so if you don't have those yet, there you have it. Sins of the Past, good rocket launcher. Um, but there's not much of a difference in the class items, I think, at all. So, between Prestige and regular, except for the initial shader. Yep, New Monarchy 1, we get it. Legal Action 2. Let's purchase size one of those. All right, so this is what it looks like here. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool looking pulse rifle. It is another reskin, of course, with, you know, just a beat up kind of paint job on it and that lion emblem that everybody apparently craves. Um, but this one is a high impact, so it is the lowest rate of fire pulse rifle. Now, this archetype of pulse rifle, I'm not too fond of, but I haven't used too many of them, especially on PC. So, in the review tomorrow, we'll see how that goes. But it's got GB Iron Sights, HC Hollow Sights, and I think I'd be sticking with the GB Irons. I'll have to play with it a little bit first. But then we've got Accurized or High Cal, uh, and then we've got Rampage. So, I think High Cal is going to be the way to go. 
for the weapon, and then Rampage kills the weapon, temporarily in grant increased damage, stacking up to three times. I think this is going to be mighty, mighty tasty for this weapon. But, um, yeah. Let's go play with this gun and see how it does. All right, peeps, and we're back. And I've had time to use this weapon a little bit. Um, oof, that, that mid-air snipe, though. Um, it's, it's worth picking up. You know, obviously I'm going to test it out a little bit. Um, doing maybe the Nightfall, uh, doing some Crucible to see what my opinion truly is on the weapon. Um, but right now, you know, in the, you know, very unskillful area, very easy area of patrols and doing public events, the weapon is really holding its own. Um, the recoil pattern is very predictable, mostly vertical, slightly to the left, um, and does a lot of damage. So there's that. We're going to see actually how the weapon does, you know, in a more competitive environment with a little bit more difficulty to it. And that'll be tomorrow's episode, doing a weapon review on the Legal Action 2. Now, something else I wanted to talk about in today's reset video is the patch that uh, Bungie released today. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to the full patch notes if you're curious. Um, I'm not going to go over their bug fixes and everything, um, minus mentioning like two two changes that really one of them's a bug fix, one of them's more just a change. Um, go over those first. The exotic rocket launcher, the Colony, previously, uh, well, there was a bug where if your frame rate was above 30 FPS on PC, uh, the tracking on the grenades, this little spider grenade mine things, would be completely random. Sometimes they would track, other times they would just kind of go in a straight line or run up a wall and explode and not do anything. Um... If your frame rate was uncapped on PC, like a lot of people I know are, um, trying to make the game look as pretty as possible, uh, it was unusable. It would nearly always bug out, and the grenades would just either go straight forward, or would go up a wall, or spin around in circles, and then would explode, not doing any damage to your enemies. My frame rate being capped at 60, um, sometimes... It would track okay. Sometimes it would work as intended. And other times it would just run in a straight line, go right up a wall and explode and not do anything. It was a gamble. Um, so I'm glad that they finally fixed that. Because I do enjoy using the colony um, in the Crucible. It's kind of funny seeing people try to run away from spider mines. Um, glad I can use it again. Uh, the other change that they did is Masterwork Armor. They changed the damage reduction in your super from 3% per armor piece to 5% per armor piece. Um, apparently, they felt that it wasn't doing enough. Um, it's going to make the Titan supers even harder to take down, and uh, that's kind of the, the downfall of that, or the, the negative side effect. I do think the positive side effect of it is it'll make Hunter Exotics, or I'm sorry, Hunter Supers, harder to uh, to shut down. You know, Golden Gun, that's basically its only damage reduction, is from armor pieces if you have a full um, armor set masterworked. But we'll see how that goes. We'll see how their little tweaks do. Um, you know, it's basically an extra 10% damage reduction throughout going from 3 to 5. If you have all 5 armor pieces masterworked, that's an additional 10% damage reduction. So it's pretty interesting. That's a pretty big bump when you add that together. Uh, now, the main thing I want to talk about is Nightfall Strike Scoring and Nightfall Challenge cards. Uh, normal and Prestige Mode Nightfalls are now done by scoring, no longer by their time modifier. So, uh, getting kills and orb generation will accrue points according to the patch notes. And if it's anything like Destiny 1, that means that, you know, just killing somebody with your primary or secondary, you know, or kinetic or energy weapon um, with a body shot will give you the least amount of points. will still give you points, but not as many as getting a precision kill with those weapons. And Masterwork weapons generating orbs sounds like it's going to be the way to go. So getting a 
precision kill generating orbs with a masterwork weapon is probably going to be the way to go generating the most points if you're not using your super or a power weapon because uh, power weapon or heavy weapon kills in destiny one granted bonus points as well um, and so did using uh, abilities like melee and grenade however it didn't say that it just says kills and orb generation but i'm assuming that grenade and melee kills will give bonus points over a regular kill as well i'll have to see how that scoring goes though i'm really i'm, I'm really excited to give it a try to see what you can do um in normal and prestige the real interesting thing is they're kind of they added in something called nightfall challenge cards uh which is only available for dlc owners which since it's something completely new that they've added in i'm fine with that they're not taking away content that we had from the get-go and locking it behind a DLC. Um, and the way that it works is the Prestige Nightfall Challenge cards allow players to select modifiers for Prestige Nightfall that affect gameplay and score multipliers. So basically you can pick what sort of modifiers you want going into a almost customized Prestige Nightfall mode. Uh, players can select an elective or elemental modifier to boost outgoing and incoming damage. Kind of like the way Destiny 1 worked, where if there was an arc boost, you yourself did more arc damage, but so did the enemy. Um, it could make certain nightfalls very difficult. Uh, if there was an enemy type that was primarily arc, and it was arc burn, um, or solar, or void, you know, having enemy damage buffed as well can scale into the pretty terrifying areas. Uh, players can opt into using a power handicap that will lower their power level in a prestige nightfall, but then raise the score multiplier. So reduce your power level by a certain amount. You get a multiplier. Kind of cool. It's a way to get your nightfall strike scoring up even higher, uh, which your highest score will be shown on your emblem that you have for each nightfall. Uh, they added in a ton of emblems, um, which, eh. Uh, it'd be nice to see if there was some sort of tracking on Bungie.net for, like, a ladder ranking system uh, for the nightfalls, or at least the challenge card nightfalls. If they don't, though, I'm sure other websites like Guardian GG will do that. However, having to go to a third-party website for some sort of ladder ranking would be kind of lame. All the all the hardware and, and tracking is there in-game. It I think it'd be a really bad move if Bungie didn't have some sort of ladder ranking system on Bungie.net, but we'll see what happens. And then Extinguish is always applied when using a Nightfall Challenge card, which means if the full fire team wipes... In a respawn restricted area, the fire team will be returned to orbit. That goes back to the original Destiny 1 Nightfalls, where if your entire fire team wiped, you went back to orbit and had to restart the whole dang Nightfall. So that adds a whole new level of difficulty in the Nightfall. No longer can you just all wipe and then wait 30 seconds and then all respawn at the same time. If you all wipe, you're done. So playing careful, playing smart, playing efficient is going to be a big part of the Nightfall Challenge cards, and I cannot wait to see how the community reacts to it. Uh, and the cards will drop for DLC owners, like I said, so you have to have the DLC to do this, uh, in Normal and Prestige Nightfalls. So you get these cards to drop in the Normal and Prestige mode, Nightfalls, and then you can use them as modifiers for going into another Prestige Nightfall with your custom modifiers on them. And the Fire Team Leader's card is applied to the entire Fire Team when launching the Prestige Nightfall. So, basically, the way that I'm interpreting that is only the Fire Team Leader needs to have a card, not the whole Fire Team. So, and the Fire Team Leader's card are the modifiers selected. So, if each Fire Team member has their own card with different modifiers attached to them, um, only the fire team leader's card is selected, um, which is good, you know. So you can you don't have to farm for a ton of cards. You know, if you go in 
with three fire team members and you each get one, basically you can do three challenge card nightfalls. So that's interesting. I can't wait to see how that plays out. I can't wait to see how the community reacts to it. Um, I think it's really interesting. I'll have to give it a try though. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do one of those this week sometime. I'll try to get a video out of that. But that is going to be it for this weekly reset video. Uh, I know it's a little bit longer than my other ones, but there's a lot to go over this time. So like I said, tomorrow expect a full review of this weapon here. The Legal Action 2. Um, but yeah, if you like this one, if you like this style of video on Tuesdays, just letting you guys know what has changed, if anything at all, um, leave a like. If you're new to the channel and you want to see more of my daily content, please subscribe. If you have anything to say, that's what the comment section is for. Do not forget to have a good day, everybody, and I will catch you all next time.